This is the grand opening weekend of the Empire State Performing Arts Center. The opening of the egg marks the completion of the 11 major buildings that make up the Empire State Plaza. Construction began in 1965, and construction on the egg itself began in 1972. The unique size and shape of the building presented engineers with a very difficult problem. How to construct a concrete building 270 feet long and 113 feet high, set on a relatively small base. The result is considered something of an architectural marvel. The center contains a 983-seat main theater, as well as a 500-seat recital hall, and will provide audiences with a variety of musical and theatrical performances. The egg will be the permanent home of the Empire State Youth Theater Institute, which is currently producing Peter Pan in the main theater. We asked the director of the youth theater, Pat Snyder, to give us a rundown of the other activities scheduled for grand opening weekend. Well, the wonderful thing about this weekend is that there's something for everybody. We have high school bands coming from around the state, dance groups. We have the Metropolitan Opera coming, New York City Ballet, uh, Leonard Castle's Mass, narrated by Kitty Carlisle Hart, uh, piano recitals, jazz concerts, laser shows, dancing on the mall. There's something for everybody. And the wonderful part about it is that it involves a lot of people the Office of General Services, Port of Van Zandt, who has been, been the producer for the weekend, and the State University of New York, the State Education Department, and government, state government. This is running uh, through the weekend and into Monday. What are the, what's the highlight of each day? Well, this evening, uh, the inaugural performance in the egg will be the preview of Peter Pan. Mm. And Sunday evening, Leonard Castle's Mass, Monday evening, a gala with the uh, dancers from the New York City Ballet and the Metropolitan singers from the Metropolitan Opera. And I'd say that those are the three large features, but simultaneously there will be other events going on in the recital hall of this new meeting center, which we call the Egg, on the bandstand in the plaza. And there are available seats, and I urge the community and the public to come to the mall and to take advantage of this wonderful festival that's taking place in their very midst. A number of political dignitaries and invited guests attended the dedication ceremonies, and the weather was beautiful and added to the festive occasion. Bishop Howard Hubbard of the Albany Diocese gave the invocation to start the grand opening of the Performing Arts Center. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have created the human person to be able to express his life and his loves in various ways and through the use of different types of expression. To lift up the human spirit, you have given us the gifts of song, dance, poetry, theater, and prose. Through the blending of human talents, your human family is enriched and refreshed. We praise you, Father, for these gifts. We see your hand in all that surrounds us, and especially in those who seek to unfold from life the joy, beauty, and meaning that you have placed there. We ask you to be with us as we dedicate this place devoted to the performing arts. Shine your light on all those who in any way have labored on this project or who will perform here. May this place always be a source of comfort and joy for all who have passed its doors. Finally, Lord, be with us as we give thanks to you, the author of the universe and the Lord of life, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Uh, Governor Carey, members of the legislature, Mayor Corning, Members of the Empire State Plaza Council, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly delighted to welcome you to these dedication ceremonies marking the formal opening of the Empire State Performing Arts Center, otherwise known as the Egg. In the midst of this grandeur and splendor, and indeed the beauty of these magnificent structures, it is sometimes easy to lose sight of the human spirit and the human endeavor which created these outstanding examples of architectural genius. The many architects and engineers, the planners, the workmen who labored so intensely 
to bring this project to culmination cannot be overlooked on this notable day. To celebrate these events, we have planned a thrilling three and a half day grand opening weekend with a program truly reflecting the manner and ways in which these facilities will be used. Surely we will have performances by the Metropolitan Opera, the New York City Ballet, and other nationally known individuals. But just as importantly, we will have performers from State University and various groups from high schools across the state, numbering some several hundred. Parenthetically, in this connection, we are indeed grateful to the State University of New York and the Department of Education for making many of these events possible. The completion of construction of the Performing Arts Center, which also signals the end of construction for the mall, truly reflects a most significant spirit of accomplishment in a renaissance New York state. This Performing Arts Center will stand as a proud new symbol of our continuing activity in the arts. This plaza now lays before you for posterity, a symbol of the resources, the power, and the greatness of this, the Empire State of the Union. Thank you. And now at this time, I would like to introduce the distinguished guests who are with me here on the reviewing stand. As I present them, I would ask them to stand and suggest that you hold your applause until I have introduced everyone. Chancellor Fortin, State University of New York. I think I'll go along as I see you. Uh, Victor Lord on the Empire State Council. Mrs. Madeline Steingut, wife of Speaker Steingut. Lou Swire, also on the Empire State Plaza Council. I see Jim Coyne, Albany County Executive. Uh, Bernie Connors, uh, also on the Empire State Council. Dominic Spano, Vice President, Albany Building Trades and Construction Group. Harold Gabrilov, Empire State Plaza Council. Assemblyman Dick Connors of Albany. Bernie Connors, Albany State Council, no, the Empire State Plaza Council. Barbara McNamee, Empire State Plaza Council. Dr. Brunner, Empire State Plaza Council. Gordon Ambach, Commissioner of Education. John Byron, Director of Construction here on the Plaza, who made all of this possible. And Pat Snyder, Empire State Youth Theater. And now it is a great pleasure to introduce to you Wallace K. Harrison, one of the country's leading architects, whose firm Harrison and Abramovitz was the coordinating architect of all of the construction here at the plaza. His genius, which is reflected here today, is also reflected in such buildings as the, as the United Nations headquarters, Rockefeller Center, and Lincoln Center. Mr. Harrison. Today, with this formal opening of the work, uh, 
Work on the last of the Empire State structures is complete. You can't imagine what that means to somebody who has worked on a building for almost 16 years, I understand it. The complex, however, is constructed. We are finished. Although as an architect who has been in the profession for many years, I know the plaza will never be complete, as change is certainly a constant. I have been asked many times why we designed the meeting center as we did. From a purely architectural approach, the meeting center as a part of, arc of the architecture fills a rather difficult part of the overall composition. Dictated by the original scheme of the temporary commission on the capital city, its ferrodial shape fills a void in the composition and its solid form has a minimum surface area for a given volume. The shape permitted the design of two holes in which seating could be arranged as an amphitheater, thus bringing all the audience as close to the scene of action as possible. In this area, the Empire State Plaza, we have spaces for functional convention center, meeting rooms, as well as theaters. There are spaces for large and small conventions, spaces where great scientists could lecture, where the great chamber music group could perform, or even one of our high school orchestras might play. Those spaces are now available to the children, the men, and the women of New York State, perhaps many of whom have never experienced the improvement of music heard in a hall rather than on the finest radio or television set. In this building which we are dedicating today, we have tried to design a center where it would be possible to provide better music and better performances for all the people of New York and the Northeast, and thus use the sciences of government and buildings to enrich the lives of the people in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. One of the main reasons why over the past two years we have been able to transform these governmental buildings into a warm atmosphere for the enjoyment of people is a gracious woman who's with us today. Her contributions to us in every aspect of the arts world have been many and manifold. I now present Kitty Carlisle Hart. Thank you. Today we raise the curtain on what will be the first of many openings at this remarkable new performing arts center. The last structure to be completed on the mall, and only now is the mall truly a finished product for it is the vibrancy and richness of the arts, the theater, the dance, the music, that brings our cities and our states to life. It is the arts that make New York State unique, that draw people to our state from hundreds and thousands of miles away, that make New York the artistic capital of the nation. And what better place to showcase the artistic wealth of our state than in the capital city? For our performing arts are indeed the expression of the richness and diversity of New York's cultural wealth. This Performing Arts Center is significant, not only for the artistic contribution it will make, but for the extraordinary partnership it has already helped to create and nurture among the many facets of our government. We have all cooperated to make this day a reality. We have come to understand that the arts touch much of what happens in New York that as we work together for a strong and prosperous state, we must also work for a healthy arts environment. This Performing Arts Center stands as tangible proof of what cooperation can achieve. I have great faith that our partnership will be as permanent and as fertile as this magnificent structure 
promises to be. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. A gentleman with whom it has always been a delight to work with and whose cooperation has always been unfailing is Honor Mara Erastus Corning of Albany. Thank you, Jim. Governor Carey, Lieutenant Governor Kupsack, Bishop Hubbard, honored guests, my longtime friend Raleigh Harrison, and all I can really say is that I join with him in seeing this culmination of the tremendous imagination and tremendous amount of hard work that he and his associates put into producing today what is such a perfectly beautiful example of the works of man. The acoustics here of the, to listen to the music are beautiful. The tower standing there and right next to it, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, then the public housing, then the Niagara Mohawk steam plant, then the grain elevator, then, <laughs> then the oil tanks, and then the beautiful hills which at least from here seemed to be still the way they were when the hand of God created them. This Empire State Plaza today has fit in and become a major part of the physical beauty and the cultural beauty of this entire area. It was a long time coming there were many complications, many problems. But today, I think we can say that this is a good job, very well done, and that the good Lord can look down from above and say that the works of man, in this particular case, have proved to be good and have proved to be works of man that have been also under the spirit and guidance of the good Lord. So I'm glad on this magnificent May Day to be with you on this final occasion of the culmination of the construction of this tremendous complex of buildings that will be remembered throughout the world for generations to come. Thank you, Mayor Corning. Certainly she has been and is a woman for all seasons, a truly remarkable person, a dedicated individual. I take great pleasure in presenting Lieutenant Governor Mary Ann Kripsack. Thank you, Commissioner O'Shea. Bishop Hubbard, Governor Carey, Mayor Corning, colleagues in government, ladies and gentlemen, much has been said of the jewel that the egg is for all of us architecturally and as a home and shelter for the performing arts. I'd like to just comment about the centerpiece that will be occupying this beautiful facility. The Empire State Youth Theater Institute has already felt a need and responded to education's call for a role of the arts in raising the consciousness of our young to the wonders and the beauties of all of the performing arts. And just as importantly, in being a vehicle for education itself, that will continue here as well as providing the anchor for performances that will inspire groups, individuals, other institutions across our state to match the excellence 
and to, as Kitty Hart has so ably said, realize the fullest potential that the arts play in the life of New York State. We continue to be a magnet for people from all over this country who come to New York to cultivate their talents and to share them with the rest of the world. This facility becomes a major center in upstate New York, taking its rightful place with all of the arts for which we are so proud across our state. It's a pleasure to be here today on such a gorgeous day to participate in this historic occasion. Thank you. No, we don't want them down. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Surely, as I have remarked, there is great beauty and dignity in this, the Empire State Plaza. But I now would introduce a man who sees a much larger beauty in the utilization of these facilities by the people, by all the people of the state of New York. It is indeed an honor to present the governor of the state of New York, Hugh L. Carey. Thank you, Commissioner O'Shea, Lieutenant Governor Krupsack, Bishop Hubbard, Reverend Bruner, Kitty Hart, all of the members of the Empire State Council, leaders who are here representing the workers and labor who created with their talents all of the structures we see around us today. Mr. Harrison, Mrs. Harrison, and all of you who participate in what should be a very joyful and inspiring day. Already the structure where we gather is affectionately known as the egg. I suppose those more euphemistic may refer to it as an elliptical spheroid, but an egg it is, and this should resolve Mayor Corning, I want to say this to our mayor, this should resolve for all time that historical conundrum as to which came first, the chicken or the egg. First of all, no pullet could ever develop the kind of sized poultry that would give us this kind of egg. And had we had chicken-hearted people in Albany when the mayor, when the governor, Governor Rockefeller then, decided to go ahead with this project, this egg would not have been here. So this resolves that question. The, chick, the egg is here, and we're certainly not going to have anything squatting on top of it. But, but in all candor, it is a very sophisticated and unprecedented structure. And the best part of the structure, as we see it here and as we will be using it, is that it is for all the people, just as are all of the parts of this great plaza, the 11 buildings. And the Empire State Plaza is a symbol to the people that they can come here for joy and the complete participation in the arts, performing, museums, and in the work that goes on here in the governmental side of these structures. Fittingly, within the resources we have available here, immediately the work of the Empire State Youth Theater will begin. And the presentation of Peter Pan will augment and inaugurate these activities today so that enjoyment and creativity will continue this work that we begin here. I see the future in terms of the lifting of hearts of young children from the schools who will first look in amazement 
at the structure and then live the enjoyment of the performances that will here take place. And many an elderly heart will imbibe nostalgia and reminisce as the great works of music and drama are performed here. And as the eloquent come here to address us on topics of our times and increase the store of knowledge in our state, for all these things, the people will realize day after day that when men are creative and join in the work of God, great things can be performed. In the Empire State, this great state in which we live and work, as Mr. Harrison said, this is a beginning, but there will not be an end, because as government extends itself in the service of the people, and the people tell their government what they wish, the changes they desire will be made in their laws, in their structures, and in the ways in which we live. It's especially important this weekend, as I think back on the words that the late Edith Lehman, widow of our former great Governor Lehman, said to me on one occasion, I hope that over all the years, all of the governors will take care to remember our veterans, those who fought to make us free. And therefore, there could be no more fitting time on which to begin these activities than this time here and now. And I'm so proud that on Memorial Day, there will be fitting and suitable remembrances throughout the day of musical and other ways in which the Veterans Memorial will come to life and again be part of this system and the surroundings so that this becomes not only a plaza but a shrine of remembrance. Therefore, we can recount, again with joy and with a great sense of spiritual commitment, that we now have the means to add to the happiness of our people. And the happiness of our people rests in their freedom and their commitment. And I'm so pleased that Mayor Corning looked over this vista and identified the works of man and the works of Almighty God now joined together. This plaza will bring all of us closer together through joy, remembrance, and the vision of tomorrow that helped to bring us here today. Thank you very much. At the conclusion of the dedication ceremonies, Lieutenant Governor Marianne Krupsack cut the traditional red ribbon, which officially opened the Performing Arts Center. Here it goes, it's all official. Hey. Uh -huh.